Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, everyone. This is me, Jonathan Alexander, and I'm here to host our show, Life Laughter Happiness. Uh, today, um, I have my co-host Barbara here with me. Are you there, Barbara? Yes, I'm here. Hi, everybody. I'm really glad that you got home safely, and I really missed you yesterday. You were, you was, oh, it was. I always miss. I always do that whenever you're not. You're not there. Uh, and our guest today. I hate to miss uh, it. I hate to miss it. I know, I know, and we hate having you be missing you. Um, now, our guest today is Bonnie Smith, who's a paranormal investigator and also a psychic. Okay. Uh, Hi, Bonnie. Hi. How's everyone? Thanks for having me. Now, you're I should great. Let you're welcome. Everyone know because I know that we already have callers. She has said that she would uh, be able to do meetings, but. I know that we have people listening in, but I'm going to go ahead and set uh, a few things here. Apparently, uh, you do well with a picture. You get a picture. Yes. So here's, here's what we're going to do, okay? Uh, my number, I always make my number public to save the uh, guests and anybody that we have on from having to make their number public. And the reason I do that is just, you know, you know, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the guests, the, the, the callers who are listening in right now, because I do see callers, and some of them are, are, are regulars, to text me a picture, and I will send it. I will take that picture, and then I will copy it, and I will send it to Bonnie, okay, um, if we do the reading, so that we can do the reading. Um, that that's that's the best way that we can. That's the best way that we can do it. So I, I have people I know that are that are hearing this. Okay, so um, what we'll do? Do they is, know where to send you uh, the picture? Yes, my number. Is, everybody, just send uh, Johnny the picture right now while we start to talk okay. to Bonnie because we can get to know eight, Bonnie while they do that. Can I get my number? One thing, please. What? Yes, if they send a picture, I'd like them to ask put quest specific questions they want answered about themselves or whatever. If it's a relationship, okay, okay. I need one of both people. Okay. Now, my yes. number is 850-737-4160. Okay. And if you text me at that number, with a picture of yourself, I will see to it that Bonnie gets it, and then I will put you through. Okay? Now, until, obviously, now you guys, you have my number, and you know how to, um, let's start uh, with getting to the Bonnie. Now, Bonnie, uh, have you always been this way? I mean, is this something that you always had? or? Yes. Uh, yes to different degrees to, throughout my life, yes. When I was young, I saw spirits and other things. I wasn't really sure what they were. I thought they were monsters. <laughs> I wasn't happy with it, mm. to be honest. I didn't like How it. I told, you? you know, I was eight years old before I realized, I guess, that some of these things I was seeing were spirits because my grandfather died, and then he appeared to me. But, of course, I, my parents were not well-received on the message. So I felt like I had something wrong with me and that, this was a bad thing, and it didn't, you know, I was happy when I saw my grandfather. He didn't scare me. He's the first one that didn't, but so, you know, it progressed, and it was through life, I kept it to myself. It was more of a burden I carried around when I did see things. It caused me a lot of fear and anxiety, um, and I thought that it was a curse. It was a bad thing that why would I be like this? I was raised in a very strict Christian home, and that's stuff is just absolutely it, at that time too you have to realize I'm 60 okay so it's been a while since I was eight years old and those times things were not accepted the same way so I you know I pushed it out of my life things would it would leave for a little while and I'd say oh it's gone and then I would pray to God please take this curse off me I don't want it and then I started getting angry with God <laughs> telling him that you know why would he do this to me and it just went on and on like that for a while um and eventually, though, it came to a point where, I mean, you can run, but you can't hide. And if it's meant to be, it will not stop. It won't go away. And um, I finally got some, you know, attachments that were not so good. And 
this was much later in life. You know, I eventually just went through and accepted it. You know, about 10 years ago, I really decided, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to start training. I'm going to start learning um, all about this meditation. So over the last 10 years, it's been fine. Before that, it really wasn't too fine. (laughs) I wasn't happy with it. And then I decided the people that helped me, they helped me for free. That I would, you know, that I, I work with them and help many other people with paranormal issues worldwide for several years with them. And then I still do that on my own. I do medium work. I teach some. I, you know, do a lot of different things just to help others any way I can, basically. Find peace and understanding. Okay. Bonnie, Bonnie. Oh, that's so much to go through at a very young age. Wow. And I know that a lot of people who are given the gift. They're not thinking it is a gift. They're thinking it's a curse. That is. And so when did you realize, hey, this is a a special gift and that you knew that you could actually study it and then just like fine tune it even more? How old were you when that happened? I would say it was in my 40s. Um, The first actual message I had enough nerve to give to somebody uh, from a dead loved one was somebody close to me and immediately after she passed she was 18 she came to me and I was like oh buddy I can't turn you away you know <laughs> I got in a position where I was forced to have to help someone in 2002 or three I think it was three and it took me a year of communicating with this spirit which wasn't easy it can be a lot like charades in the beginning you know it's like I wasn't developed in any way then and to understand fully, but she kept on and on, and then she actually gave me the lyrics for a song for her son, and in a year, I had made a lunch date with her mom and gave her all that, and it went well, and I saw that it really helped somebody. I, the first time I really realized this might be something I could do with this, but I still wasn't quite ready to. I got attacked and almost killed not long after that, so it kind of put me off for a few years there, eight years, <laughs> nine years to be exact, but I mean, I would have went on with it in 2003, I think, if things, the universe, things didn't happen the way they did, and I guess things happened for that reason, you know. It happened at the right time. Well, okay, I just wanted to ask you, when you did see these spirits, what, can you describe it, how that was, you were sleeping and they came to you in a dream, or would you see them when you were awake? I mostly saw them at night because then I was quieter laying around. You know, during the day, you know, when you're little kids, you don't know, you know, don't seem to notice it as much. I didn't. But at night, I was terrified. I had horrible nightmares. Uh, they looked, some looked like monsters made of smoke and other different things, you know. Um, none of them attacked me when I was a child. I have been attacked as an adult, but, <laughs> excuse me. But I definitely. Uh, yeah. I I, I would look. I would cover my head up with my pillow over my ears and and not even want to look. <laughs> so do you, do spirits come to you because they know that you have a connection? You can get a connection and you are able to see them. Because I was attacked by a spirit in my early twenties and it was super real. I mean, they were, oh, yeah. trying, they were trying to suffocate me. Mm-hmm. And that I don't. Happens. I'm not. I don't. I mean, we're all a little bit psychic, but I'm not gifted like you and many others like that. But why do they do that? Why are some scaring and attacking and some are nice? And they're nice, and I've seen ghosts recently, and they weren't trying to scare me. They were just trying to tell me something. Is there some wrong Uh reason to all of this? How how do we figure it out if we are seeing? It's kind of like this. If they were a good, grounded, nice person living, then chances are that they're going to be okay on the other side and be the same personality, basically. But there's some that die in a desperate situation who might use, like, desperate, you know, measures to get the point across, even though it's kind of wrong to attack a person. I had that happen with a Native American woman at a job. I went for a job interview, and she just pops right in there by her husband. I'm thinking, oh, no. (laughs) And I just said to her, basically, through telepathy, I can't do this. You know, this man doesn't know me. If I tell him you're standing there, I certainly won't get this job, you know. And so, but she made my life, oh, terrible. It was terrible for me there. She'd make us run into each other all the time and, oh, just a total disaster. 
every time I touched technology, it would mess up. So eventually, I just said to her, okay, if you want me to give him this message, then you need to make an opening for it for me. Because this is, you know, my livelihood. I can't just go around doing that. You know, I don't make money doing the other thing. I, I, I and so she did. And then he walked up to me one day and he says, I hear you have a message for me from my wife. So she wasn't a bad spirit. She was desperate to get her point across. Yeah, Sometimes they act oh, out yeah. in a negative way. But then you have negative okay. people who are just mean and attack and they don't want to leave. They don't want to pass over. They're scared, whatever reason, you know. Or they think okay. it's just fun to mess with you. I was thinking that, well, hey, I can, do, I can mess with somebody, I'm going to mess with somebody. Right, yeah. A lot of a lot of things uh, can be done to stop that, you know, I've learned over the years. I used to could not stop them from just walking up into my life. But now I have shields of things and guides that I've connected with through studying and meditation that, that keep that down. But I, anyone can still get attached, including me. It happened not long ago, so it doesn't happen all the so time anymore, know. though. It's so Johnny. good to know, though. It's so good to know. There's ways uh, to. Okay, Johnny. Yes. Yeah. Johnny. Okay, I was what trying to. Say? Um, I got a, somebody's picture, but I okay. tried to send it to you, and it keeps saying not delivered. Do you have any that we could be the reason behind that, or? Uh, no, not at all. I mean, let me check on. Did, can you send it on Messenger? It might come through better there. I'll try that. Let me try this. Yeah. It yeah. Didn't this come is through a, on this text, is a, so. Let me see here. I'll uh, give me one second here. Image. Well, okay. it's so interesting, yeah. though, Bonnie. It's very interesting, all of this. And I am so glad that I've had two encounters with spirit. So I am a total believer of it. Wonderful. Because, I mean, once it happens, I mean, you know it has happened, right? Yes. Absolutely. I, I knew it was human people I was living with, even when I was little. I knew that it felt like they didn't belong in my world, but I guess they did. But okay. it's hard uh, on kids. The first, the first person uh, that we're going to have on, uh, her name is uh, Laura uh, Dale, and I just sent you the picture on Facebook. Uh, okay. And. I'm going to put her through so that she can kind of explain the, 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 the reason for the call. Okay, okay sure. That's oh, great. Hey, Laura. I'm sorry. I had to make sure that she got the picture. Okay? Okay. Yeah. No problem. Laura, no, nice to meet you. Told, yeah. Nice to meet you. The question is, is, when will I start a job and when will I move into my own house? Okay? That's the question. Yes. I'm getting within the next six weeks on the job that you'll start. Okay. Are you picking up any specifics about the job? No, just that it within six weeks came to me. Okay. About the house, I am not getting anything through exactly on that yet. Are you in the shopping for a house or just need to get a job and to get one, you know? I think the job is going to come first, like, you know. Yeah, the job, yeah, first. It has to come first. But I do, yeah. I just want to get a house really bad. I want to move out of my apartment. I do believe you'll get it, though. You know, stay focused. You know, keep yourself, you know, aligned to that to that goal. And keep at it, and I think you will, will achieve it. It's just not showing up in the very near, near future, like maybe not the next six months, maybe, but after that. Okay, the the job is um is there anything at all that you're picking up about it? Any details at all? No, no details on the job. Just that you will right. probably get one within the next six weeks. Okay, good. All right, well thank you. I appreciate the reading. Okay, you're welcome. Is that is that answered your question, Laura? Uh, I mean that's that's what all she's getting, so yeah, that's Okay. That's what All right. it is. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Thank you, Laura. Yes, thank you. All right. You. Now. Okay, that's, nice that's good. I recognize Laura's voice, so that's good that she will be okay. looking forward to a new job in a house. Is somebody else saying okay. a photo too, Johnny? 
Yes, uh, we have another person. Uh, okay. Let me do that right here. Uh, this person's name is Wendy, and I'm putting her through right now. Are you there, Wendy? Hi. Thank you, Jonathan. Yeah, okay. Hi, I just now sent you your picture on Facebook. Hi, everybody. So. Hi. Okay. Did you, did you get the picture, Bonnie? Yes, I did. I'm looking at it right now. Okay. Wendy, what is your question? Um, my question is, on May 29th, I'm going to communicate to my doctor um, via email uh, to the hospital email system. I'm going to ask her if she will extend my medical leave off at least another two months. Uh, I really need off through the end of October, but I'm going to try initially for another two months. Will Dr. Lee approve this? I think she will, but she might try to resist you a little, but you're just going to have to be persistent with her, your daughter or okay. him, whichever. Well, her hand. I'm, I'm going to send her a picture of, I had recently fallen um, of a bruise on my leg to, a, mm-hmm. to attest to my weakness in my back, which she's never received <laughs> before. And I'm also going to list very specific reasons why I need additional time to heal. So as long as I do it in that formal manner, Will she right. extend me off another two months or so? I think you'll get an extension due to your medical issues, yes. How how long will I be extended off? Will it be like two months now and then another two months after that? That I'm not sure of. I think you'll get your two months. I should You should get your two months right now, but, you know, just keep your case together for them because they can be hard mm-hmm. from insurance. It's about wanting to pay yeah, and just trust and you know that you have you know just take trust it you know I think they will but I don't know about four months that's a little bit down the line and I'm not getting anything on four months but two months sounds like you're going to get it okay and when will I start my social security will it be in October or will it be January what do you see are you already on it or are you applying for it I no, I, I'm not. I'm trying to wait because the longer I wait, the more I'll get. So I'm thinking maybe October, but I'd rather wait until January. I think you can you can get it in January or October, maybe even October. That's your choice. You're going to get it though. Oh yeah, I, oh I know I'll qualify, but I I'm trying to get the most I can. So in order for me to wait until January, it means I'm going to have to have some sort of income coming in. That means um, either medical leave or something else. But um, all right. Well, thank you very much. I would go with the medical leave and try to get that, you know, because that's a long stretch there. Yeah. Well, um, it's, it's pretty, it's all very highly supported medically. Um, and my doctor knows all this. Uh, so I will present to her in a very formal way, and I will show her the picture of the bruise from the fall that I had. Right. And and maybe that will uh, get the results that I'm looking for, her, that she'll approve it. Because I'm sure that other people look at this, people above her, and uh, with, with all the su- supportive evidence, I would certainly hope that she would approve me. Right, right. I don't think you're going to have a problem with that. Okay. So you do see the two months, and uh, you're not able to see more than two months right now, but there may be a possibility of another two months after this? It's possible. It's possible. But I'm definitely seeing two, and I'm hoping, you know, for your sake that it goes longer than that. But I'm not seeing the whole four but I am getting the trust with you. You need to trust about this, you know, trust that it's going to happen, you know, be relaxed in it. So that's a good thing. Trust, trust in that this is going to work out for you. 
That sounds like good advice. Okay. Yes, thank you. To. Okay. God thank you. Everybody. Nice to meet you. Oh. You too. Bye bye. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Great. Well, you know, when you see, when you give someone a reading, you know, like uh, what do you, what do you what 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 happens? Like what goes through your mind? Usually, I see numbers, figures. I feel a gut feeling, and it will just pop in my head. You know, a number, a figure, or answer. I feel a strong pull towards a certain thing. Yeah. Um, I've, I mean, it can happen in a lot of different ways, but tonight it's basically like that with this type of thing. I do sometimes I see visions and other things, but not generally. I mean, to me, a reading is when I'm sitting down going over like maybe a whole lot of things, but answering questions is a little different. You know, it's reading a question, but it's not the same as like reading that person down to the core. And um, sometimes I do that for people also, but not too often. Mostly I use most of what I do to help people with issues of bad energy and, you know, different things, help cross spirits, help their find peace, get rid of entities, break spells and bad uh, juju people put on others and stuff like that. But it's kind of like a knowing, you know, the sense of knowing. Oh, yes, Bonnie, that raises a question about the bad spirit, I mean, the bad spells that are placed on people. So others have this control where they could put a bad spell on you. How do we know if we have a bad spell put on us? Well, a lot of the, a lot of the time, um, you the person that has a bad hex spell or um, curse will have a lot of issues in their life. Um, there's different ways they can place them because I've studied a lot of it, and um, they can place them in different ways. It depends on how some people actually do have power enough to, to put evil out on others, and they do. Um, you it, you handle it depending on how they put it out there to them. If it's a curse on an entire family, you know, it's like the, they will have bad luck. They will have murders. They will have suicides a lot of the times. They will have extreme maybe uh, drug and alcohol money issues. It's like it completely destroys some. If they're good at it, it can destroy somebody for generations even. So, you know, it's to me it's a bad thing to do that. It's not uh, – so I try to, you know, I've learned and studied magic a lot. I am a witch, but I'm a good witch, and I – Use what I've learned to break the bad, the darkness, and help others to escape it. But I've seen oh, some very, wonderful. very bad curses that have went on for generations. We call them generational curses that have just right. destroyed people. Absolutely. I've heard of this. Oh, okay, but I heard that these people who actually put the curse on another, that it will come back to them like three times Absolutely. Is, is bad. And does this happen every time? It will come back to them does it come Eventually, back to them after yes. you fix this and then it will go back to them um it's going to go to them anyway because the people you know it are not supposed to harm others in most any religion okay harming others is not acceptable for witches by the wiccan read i mean there's a million different types of witches out there and people uh based you know just like there are christians you know different Christian organizations. So you have those that are dark and believe in harming and they, they get mad at you for stuffing their toe. They might put a curse on you. You have those that that would never do that to anyone because they don't want the karma that's going to come with it. And a lot of them believe in the threefold rule. I don't necessarily think it always comes back times three, but I can guarantee you, you get what you put in it. You put bad out there, you're going to get bad back. It's going to happen, you know, maybe I won't get to see it and visualize the karma or the person who's, you know, been suffering. You know, some, most times we never know exactly where it came from and the person who did it. You know, I don't reverse right. curses for right. one reason. I used to when I didn't know as much as I know now, but I don't want anyone else's family members suffering because of their stuff either. We, Any family can have someone in it that that harms others is bad. That doesn't mean the whole family that they live in deserves to suffer because of it. You know what I'm saying? So I break yeah. curses. I don't return them. But I do know that, and I will bind individuals that are harming others, you know, and trying to attack them with uh, psychic attacks or magic. 
but I can anybody uh, put a curse on like can a regular person who doesn't even know if they have any power like that at all can they just you know the biggest part of magic is intention the biggest part of what makes magic work is the intention not that they might know how to do the ritual of placing a curse in some ways but if somebody has that much bad intention towards somebody, yes, they can produce nerve. And then that's how energy works. You can send that energy, and that, but it's not like you know a professional curse, so to speak, if you want to call it that. You know, it's right. but it can. An energy sent from one individual to another definitely can cause issues, but not the serious because ones energy. normally. You know. Well, that is so interesting because it is energy. So enough bad thoughts and bad vibes and bad words towards somebody, it becomes mm-hmm. something. It becomes yeah. a thing. Wow. Someone I so follow a lot while I've been learning is James Van Prague, and he will tell you really quickly in his books that, and I've, you know, seen him in, in, him do his thing too, that um, thoughts are real. Thoughts can be real, and they can be manifested, and that's really the basis of magic in itself. The more you put into those thoughts, the more you put into those actions towards a certain direction and energy, the more you put out there. Okay. Will you say that name again, that that person that you study, James what? James Van Prague. I've read almost all of his books. When I first decided to start um, to learn about this, uh, my husband at the time told me, you know, you need to, 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 to read his books. You've got this, you know, he knew, he's the only one really kind of encouraged me about it as an adult <laughs> and you know you so you I started reading them. System. excuse me it's nice that you have that support system in your husband yes I did and he and he did at that time we, even though we're no longer together he really was a, was a person who kind of saw it in me believed in it and kind of pushed me towards trying to learn it which which really helped me you know along the way of it right. <laughs> It, but yeah, I did his online. He used to have an online community and a Wednesday chat, and he would have maybe a hundred people in there. You know, you got more up close, and because he's very, you know, well known worldwide, it's hard to get to, to train only with him. But you know, he's definitely been with somebody that I've watched a lot, read about, and and done a lot of the things he said to do to come to where I am today and to open up, you know, and my abilities and help others. So. Wow, okay, I just yes. looked him up. He has a good website. And he does certification graduate programs. Yeah, wow, I really never even good. knew this was out there. Yes, one reason I haven't done all this is because I couldn't afford it. I had to get free help, you know, basically, try and learning on my own. But now I'm thinking about in the future here, things are a little better for me that I might be able to take some actual courses from him. I've taken them from other places, but not him. And basically try to stay with those that, and I try to teach a lot as much as I can for free because everybody does, I didn't have the money throughout all my life to do this. When I was, you know, the time I had the money to do this, I actually had it blocked, you know. So a lot of people charge. I'm not against charging. I'm not against it at all. I just don't feel led to do that because of my own instances. It's your way of you're giving back, and that's right. going to come back to you as well. The good, and it's then up. you'll Everything be probably back. given something. Well. Yes, I like that. That's very positive. Okay, I have another very image cool. here. You do? Great. Yeah. Johnny, are you putting uh, this person through that the next image? Yes, apparently uh, this person is, is named Karen, and, and uh, she has a question only. It's about her dog. She also sent me a picture of her dog. Are you are you there, Karen? Yeah, yeah I'm here. You there? My name's Karen. Yes. Hi, Karen. Yes, I'm calling from Chicago. Hi, how are you? Thank uh, you for taking nice my call. My pictures. Did, nice to meet did you. Did you get the picture um, of Bonnie? My question- I didn't get the dog. I did get a picture of a young lady with a hat with a really beautiful yes. smile. <laughs> yes, yes, that's me. That's me. Okay. Um, I, I'm wondering. I'm wondering. Um, my my little dog is sick, and he needs to go to the vet. And I'm just wondering um, if you see, because we're in the middle of. Uh, we have another two weeks before uh, they release the release us from um, quarantine out here in Chicago, where I'm at. But I'm wondering if you see me um, getting borrowing some money or finding the right vet to take my dog to. Um, I'm very low on funds right now. I'm trying to borrow money, but, you know, everybody else is broke, too. 
Hmm. I think you're going to have to get out and dig for her right now under the circumstances. Dig for help. Okay. You don't, you know, like, I don't know if they have the SPA. What is the F- There's a special organization from Florida anyway that the helps. I don't know what they have in your state. But uh-huh. under the, in, the the circumstances, I certainly would reach out to okay. uh, to some of the organizations that help animals there, you know, that look out for them. Okay. Because I think if you don't, he might get sicker. Oh, okay. okay. Before that period, you know, you want to probably go ahead and get it taken care of. Right. If you can at okay. all. And I would try to go through some of them and tell them, you know, that, but I mean, the whole world knows people are struggling terribly right now and lockdowns and shutdowns and finances, you know, so hopefully there will be some organization, but I do think he needs to get in there soon. I'm just getting that energy from you that I would do it sooner rather than later. Okay. Okay. Then I'll really move on it then. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Take care. Bye. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. -bye. Okay. Thank you. I mean, do you well, ever? It's too bad that there's yeah. not more organizations out there for animals like that because I know that there's free care for children who need procedures done. So that would be something right. we should look into, Johnny, for people with animals. In oh, Florida, mm-hmm. I knew a source in Central Florida, but I don't know anything like that here in Washington. You know, we're in or in Chicago, but we had a place called Pet Love that actually. I mean, you could get everything done for dirt cheap, and I think people who really couldn't afford it, they would work with them, you know. And they and they trained a lot of the veterinarian students there, but they were working with real veterinarians, so you know, it, it, it was a lot cheaper for people to get. Yeah, the maybe help like a need. training where, yes, like a training place for veterinarians. And we should look that's into that. That's what this place was in Florida, and they were good. I never had any problems, you know. All the meds for your animals, for fleas or whatever you need. Way cheaper, warming, nothing, you know. They had one for cats. No. That, that took cats and dogs, and they had another one where I found a little abandoned cat that I had to be uh, removed. And it was a, an organization there who took him in and uh, paid for the surgery, and one of them adopted him, you know. So it's – Oh, just that would be nice. Is. I think if you look, though, that there are people out it. there that can help. Right. There's got to be something. So check your local, you know, just Google it, and there must be something in every big city. So, yes, let's help. Yeah. Okay, good. Wow. Johnny, how's it going with the images? Are they coming in? Uh, well, there's two people that are currently um, listening in, but I can't get either of them to respond when I scream. So I'm I'm basically just letting them know uh Bonnie is uh is a psychic that needs a picture. So if you have a question, please text me a picture at eight five zero seven three seven four one six oh and I'll put you through. Um when you are like have you ever had a reading that was so intense that it made you sick? Oh, me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, I have. I have been physically ill from um, things like that before. I've been definitely had some issues. Um, when I first got out of training, I took astral projection and remote viewing classes with the team I was on prior. And um, so we paired up in teams and did cases, and we had one in New Zealand. And it actually was a demon case. And um, before, when we astraled there, me and my partner had a habit of just, like, hovering outside with our spirit before we go into a place to get a feel. And when we were in the process of, like, getting a feel on this place, we both got violently ill. I mean, literally had to get out of our meditation, go and throw up in the physical world. And so we told our, you know, our trainers which handled it, and it was a very, very, very strong demon that was there at that time. So that was, you know, you kind of get used to this, what you might smell or what they might put on you like that, you know, with time. But the first time, it definitely <clears throat> can shake you up for sure. Yeah. 
And it's your gut feeling, and it gets you in your gut. You want you feel nauseated. Yep. That's interesting. Yep. It's not a headache. It's a, it's a nausea. Wow. Yeah. Huh. And you take on a lot this. when you do this. Have you seen a picture of me and Barbara before? Yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, Barbara, is there anything you're wondering about? Hmm. Well, I, yes. But then if I have a question, I would have to send you a photo. Maybe no, I have. Hold on. Yeah, I have her No, photo. but not about me. It's about somebody else in my life, though. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> I don't know. I have to think about a thing for my own self. Johnny, I just, see, I have access to all of this, and you would think that I would have tons of questions about myself, but I don't. I have a question about what? my mom, though. Can I send that in? Sure. Okay. Do you have questions in the meantime while I send this to Johnny? Uh, Johnny, do you have questions? While I, I, I guess I'm kind of curious. I guess I'm kind of curious when I'm going to meet Barbara in person because, you know, I was going to meet Barbara on my birthday on the 28th. I turned 48 in eight days. And, oh, wow. Yeah, and um, that wasn't going to happen for the coronavirus. And I, I just want to know, when do you see me and Barbara meeting? Now, you see the picture of me and her together, so right. I'm seeing picture. So, so you maybe that'll help you answer that question. What's your opinion on that? Let me go over here and look real quick. If not by the end of this year, maybe by the beginning of next year. But I think things are still going to stay in your way for a while. But hang in there because I've met a lot of people doing that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you guys were together that I never saw or knew. And uh, you will. If you if you put your mind to it, you guys will. We're just kind of all in a situation now. Things are just not normal, you know, for us. Wow. Also, That's a long time to wait. I'm thinking also, the end of the year, before the end of the year. I mean, it okay. depends, you know, on how, how you guys I, go. But I think you will meet, you know. It's good. It, it's always, right. you know, I've met some wonderful people doing this from all over the United States. And I just also add that me and Barbara, we're also doing a TV channel together. Isn't that true, Barbara? That's right. Wow, wonderful. He always <laughs> wants to know about business, uh, our show, our TV channel, and things like that. It's if we're going to see success and when. Right, Johnny? Yes. Are we going to see a lot of success? We've already had success, but a lot more success, Bonnie? Yes. Yes. Same for oh, yes. That's good. That's good. Well, I sent my picture of my mom and I, and this was just a few days ago, taken a few days ago when I was visiting her in Washington State. So, Johnny, did you forward that to Bonnie yet? Uh, I haven't got. Oh, oh, I got. Yeah, let me go. see. Yeah. No new images yet here on my screen. Okay, let me okay. go. I think I got it. Give me one second here. Great. Okay. I like this sending pictures because I feel like you can really get a hold on it even better. I always thought it would be yeah. so hard I, to uh, just read somebody without even seeing them. I, I mean, I can read people in that. person, but it's like pictures have always been something for at least five years that, that I like that I like to get from clients or anyone, you know, they work for me. Okay, you should have gotten Right, and I know that. Right. Does that mean that, All yeah, the, is that, is that the sound that we sent okay. you a picture? Yep, it is. <laughs> All the pet psychics usually want a photo, I've noticed. But yeah. the people who are reading the people, not so much, but the pet psychics, they always want one, don't they, Johnny? Yeah. Okay, so this person is my mom named Judy. And my question is, how long do you see her life? Oh, <laughs> let me see. To give to give a lifelong being, 
I'm getting an energy from her. How old is she now? 73. I think you have a long while to pursue. A long while? Yeah, I'm not so great. You know, there's a lot of things that go into answering questions about how long someone's going to live, to them or to their families, in my opinion. I generally right. don't feel like I have the right to always yeah, say that. Hard. If I come up on someone who's dying as a client, I will try to find a way to tactfully have them get a checkup and get their health and tell them I'm picking up some health problems rather than saying you're dying, you know. I don't I don't um, yeah. feel like I have the right, even if I know, necessarily to give that information because of a spiritual reason, well, you know. Yes, and I think that that is a good way of uh, dealing with it because the doctors don't think that way. And you know what? That causes so much worry and grief because they don't know they're not god but yet they say something and then you base everything around that and so maybe privately you could tell me but i understand. i would rather do that one privately to be honest but you can pm me anytime and we can we can get into that further um i am like i said weary about you know, saying, hey, you know, this person's going to die in a month or two or, you know, I mean, I can tell a lot of things, but I'm no one's completely 100% on that. But I don't like to give that answer. But if anything, any questions or anytime I can help you with that, dear, just message me on Messenger and I'd be glad to help you with any of it. Okay. Thank you. And, you know, while we're talking about contacting you, do you want to tell our listeners how they can maybe get a private reading with you and where to find you on social media? Yes. Yes, I am on Facebook as Bonnie Smith, and uh, my picture has psychic medium, and then I uh, it says owner of 911 Emergency Paranormal Health and Experiencer Support Group. You can go through there. You can, or you know, I also have that group that's online that people can join and learn and read and ask questions or get help for, you know, issues that are occurring in their life that are causing them problems that I can help with. And um, then I'm, people just PM me and I do medium work or psychic work with them, you know, outside of what I do with my team. And I also have to shout out to my team tonight. I've, I'm not the only one that makes up 911 Paranormal. I uh, may have started it, but I have, I have Melissa Wilcox, and I have Karen Snyder Jane and I have Lindsay Esri and they are fantastic people who work in this field and they do it for me for free like I do and help me and I wouldn't be able to do or or embrace this path without their help and I love them like sisters <laughs> so I had to put that out there to them. Okay, great. And I just looked you up and added you as a friend too, and it's easy. You have an easy name, so that makes it super yeah. easy to connect with you. That's right. great. So I think we're friends now. All right, great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like your page. Your, uh, Where are you living your, uh, currently, Barbara? I live in Huntington Beach, California. Okay, Huntington Beach, California. So you're closer to me than uh, yeah, I love Florida. It, yeah. yeah, I moved across from Florida to here, though. <laughs> Shoot, I know. Pretty fast. Mm-hmm. I love it over in the side yes. state, though. I do, too. I am West Coast girl, that's for sure. I am meant to be in California. I love this weather. I love my place. I was just so glad to be home. It was a wonderful visit, but it's a very slow yeah. pace over there in Grand Coulee. And I like the city, and I like the beach, and I like being yeah. around people. Everybody's yeah. wearing masks and things, but they're going to open the restaurants on Thursday here, so I'm glad about that. Right. Wow, mm-hmm. we're still in, in, not into that phase yet in my area. Some parts of Washington are, but my county isn't yet. Yeah. The restaurants and then bars and most of your, all your gyms, all that stuff is still closed, you know, salons. Um, right. So, and I think in some counties they've made more mandates to wear masks, like uh, King County where, you know, Seattle and different ones have the worst cases. 
that I generally, mm-hmm. I put one on in crowded places. You know, I have uh, asthma and respiratory issues, so I don't want to get it, you know, to myself. No. <laughs> I'm so mad at the coronavirus. All, people have been making me so mad on Facebook with the things they say to others. You know, if you wear a, a face mask, don't be my friend. People should make that choice for oh, themselves. No. They know their health. People are getting a little well, crazy and way out there about this. You know, I, it is something serious that we have to all, you know, pay attention to. Well, but, wearing you know, a don't mask judge is others. Really going to, yes, don't judge others. Wearing a mask is to respect others. So it's not right. to protect your, you know, if, if you don't, if you don't know, you can be walking around and have the, the virus, yeah. then it's protecting them. So it's more of a, you're being nice to the world and walking in to get a sandwich or just the grocery store, you're being respectful of the people who work there every day, dealing with so many people. That's what yep. it's about. Respect. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I boil yeah. down to respect a lot and people are not very respectful. It seem would seem to have sadly seen a lot, you know, it just it made me so mad. I had a rant about it on my page. You know, people saying, don't yeah. be my friend if you like Trump. Don't be my friend if you hate Trump. Don't be my friend if you wear a mask or if you don't. You know, I'm like, what? Are we in kindergarten again? Please. Exactly. <laughs> you know, that's, let us be the individuals yeah. that are individual like our DNA. You know, that's why we're all different. You know, we all have many different things about us and facets. You right. Know? And maybe they feel a lot different about it. If they had somebody close to them die of the coronavirus, they might think differently. So they need to put the themselves in other people's shoes. Absolutely. I agree 100%. Mm-hmm. You know, I think if they would have made a mandate on masks immediately when they saw this happening here, then we would have had a lot less death and a lot less problems. And I can say that because I was a nurse for 20 years. I was in oh, yeah. and bugs for years. I understand, you know, it wasn't, you know, about these things, but because it's a novel virus, it's definitely not like the rest. I won't get into conspiracy theories or anything with you, but it's, uh, you know, yeah. it's like, it's not the same as anything I've ever seen in my 60 years and in my 20 years in the medical field. So that I can Yeah, tell. you would know, being a nurse. You know, that it's no, not the same. It's lot. not typical. It's not a typical virus. So people have to hand this, handle this atypically, you know. It's not something you can you know, say how somebody needs to. If you're young and healthy, but even though, like you said, if you go visit your grandma and you're a 30-year-old who's saying, I'm not wearing a mask and I don't care, and you kiss your grandma and she gets it and she dies, you're not going to feel good. I wouldn't. (laughs) Me neither. We need to protect them. Right. Oh, wow. Well, you're such a good person. That's really good to hear. You guys seem pretty great yourself, too. Nice to have met you and talked to you. You know, I'm glad yeah, to be here and get glad. the word out, you know. It, it, I like to get the word out, you know. Uh, like I said, it's not about money for me. It's just about helping others in whatever way I can, basically. I guess I was born like that, you know. I knew by eight I wanted to be a nurse and help save the world or something. You know, I don't know. It That's still continues. So cool. It's nice when you know, thing, you know what you want to do. You had a passion for helping people. You have a passion for helping people and you're doing it. Have you noticed that people need you a lot more during this epidemic? Pandemic? At first it slowed down. At first it was rather slow. I think people were a little in shock and I went through kind of a, a quiet period for a few days or weeks. I don't even think it was weeks, but maybe a week. And then it seems to be, you know, picking up. People are, you know, yes. are focusing and then, you know, back doing more of their normal, you know, contacting me about things and stuff. In the beginning, though, I think people were more in shock and that, you know, that's like full moon. Sometimes, I mean, they're rarely busy, believe it or not. They say the full moon brings on paranormal because, you know, they mm-hmm. have always said that. But it does make people act differently. But I don't know. We seem to not get a lot of calls on full moons. Just wanted to put that out there, you know. <laughs> It's uh it depends, but not too bad normally. Halloween mm-hmm. either. That's another one. Halloween is not a very busy time. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, that's interesting. That was my mom's birthday. I always thought that was funny that she was born right on Halloween. Wow. I have a baby born on Halloween. Mm-hmm. Does that mean yep. anything? Not specifically that I would know of. Um, it's uh, 
it's a it's a, ce- a celebration in some religions where they honor the dead by lighting candles and you know some call it sewing some call it Halloween you know Day of the Dead it's it's you know, and over here, you know, well, in the U.S., most of us get our costumes on and go get candy. <laughs> yeah, that's you know? what we're thinking about. Yep, yep, that's Having what I was party. last year, Having getting out fun. candy up here. Mm-hmm. And they had a punk or treat, and I was up there giving out candy. And I have a new granddaughter this year, so I will definitely be up there doing it again this year. <laughs> oh, that's fun. For it's just it's fun when you have a kid. I think my child is done. This last year she was 12, and... She d- was not into it as much, but she'll be doing the friend thing. There's, It's just always so fun. I love dressing up. Aww. But that's the last thing I would do is just, like, stay home and call a psychic because everybody's out having fun. But what would be so cool is at your home, you could set up a little reading table as they come by. Mm-hmm. That would be fun. Right. Were there any people in your family, any others that you're related to by blood with this gift as well that you have found? Not, not many willing to admit it publicly. <laughs> and you can tell. Do they tell you or you just know? Um, you just know. And they were not admitted. I know. I know. But I would say I have I have a total of eleven grandchildren. I have five daughters, four four daughters and one son, and three of them are older that have you know. So I have grand one grandchild here in Washington, and there are some of them, and some of my daughters actually do, but they don't want to admit it. <laughs> they might not like me oh. saying that. But it's true. They they do have some of it in them. Some of them more than others. But they aren't mm. choosing to develop it or learn about it, and they're not exactly. 100% happy that I do it, I guess. But, you know. Yeah. And you were saying that when you were growing up, it wasn't really well received. Did you have a hard time when you were telling your parents about it when you were really little, 8, 9, 10, for them to believe you? Were they believing you? Yes. They Did didn't they try believe, to help you? They thought I was crazy. They thought that I, okay, but see what happened is my grandfather passed. I was extremely close to him. And, uh, I pitched a fit to go to his funeral, and they debated about whether to let me go at that age, and they finally let me go. So, I mean, I did fine through that part. I mean, you know, I was upset a little, but not, you know, I was in control for that age, and, and you know, I missed him a lot. And then when he showed up, I was in the bathroom, and he just showed up in there. And I was, like, running out, and I was so happy. I ran out instantly and said, Mom and Dad, Grandpa's not dead. He's in the bathroom. And they went, Huh? And I'm like, they stopped instantly and looked at each other. And one of them said, you know, I think we might have to get her some psychiatric help because we shouldn't have let her go to that funeral. And I'm thinking to myself, I was so happy because I just saw him again. And then they just blew my mm-hmm. bubble right out of the water. <laughs> With, they were not, yeah. a, they were, before, let's say my dad never did really buy into it. My mom understood it before she passed away in uh, 2015. I'd had, by the time I was older, you know, and she was older, you know, they, they knew and I had, you know, and understood, but my, uh, it was not when I was at home young before I got married or nothing like that. No, I like to support psychic kids myself and, and, uh, do work with some, I've worked with a few, you know, that, Mm -hmm. so that they don't have those bad feelings about themselves. Like something's wrong with you, you know? And it, cause that, it was pretty damaging to me, and I think it was it caused me a lot of, like, PTSD at a young age and anxiety because I really want, you know, <laughs> I used to call them monsters, and, of course, they thought their kid, you know, they, they're just doing what kids do. Monsters are there, you know. <laughs> but when I told right. Grandpa showed up, that kind of changed the whole nature of the conversation, too, in a dark, bad way. I was like, I'm not ever saying that to them again. And then you had to hold it in. Them mental hospital, you know. <laughs> yeah. So it was really rough. You know, they didn't mm-hmm. know any better that, you know, I don't blame them now. I never did blame mm-hmm. them. I think, you know, I realized coming from the the days I came from that people just were not that educated. It's a much better world for the gifted now, you know. It really is. It, is. it really but is. But a lot of what I do is protect okay. gifted people that are trying to learn their, their, their abilities that, open doors and maybe something comes after them, you know, I'm there to kind of help keep them safe till they can do that themselves too. Oh, I like that. That is wonderful. 
It really you know, is. I'm getting the word out there is what I'm all about so we can help more and more people, you know. Well known, yes. Yes. I find it so interesting. And also, that is so cool that your grandpa came to you when you were awake. So then you really know. Okay. Oh, he was a full body apparition. He was full body apparition. He almost looked living, but I, you know, that's why I told him he's not dead. He's in the bathroom. It's just so real. I was just so excited, you know, that, oh, he's back, you know. Did he talk to you? No, he didn't talk to me. (laughs) He never did. But he showed up, and then, you know, of course, I ran in there. I don't think I ever saw him again, but maybe twice at that house. And then I didn't see him again till probably the last four years. Then I connected with him again. But he didn't, like, stay around me all the time. Or if he was, I didn't know it. Right. Do you help people also to open, like, do you have tools for them to use to open themselves so they can see their loved one because they want to so badly, they want to see and be close to their loved one that has passed? Are there techniques to help people open themselves up to it? Yes. Meditation is almost the key to all of it, although early in the grief process, When you've lost someone very close to you, then you're in pain. It is really hard to connect to them for that some reason at that time. Normally, because of the pain. I mean, it just depends on the person, but, you know, um, it takes a little time, you know. I have one spirit. He's one of my favorites, and I hope his mom's listening tonight. His name's Josh, and he was one of the most comical spirits. He came to me for me to help his mom. His mom did not contact me. He contacted me (laughs) from the other side. And um, he literally, you know, he, he had an issue and he had overdosed and died that very day. And I had read her post and he just popped in and said, you've got to get a hold of my mom. You've got to help her or she's not going to make it through this, you know. But so I did. I messaged his mom and I've been talking to her ever since. I love her to death. She's, they're both like family. But I have seen him do some of the most comical things. People think spirits can't be funny, but he can and he can manipulate the uh, physical world from the other side quite well. And all of them are at different levels with that, too. But, uh, I mean, not long ago, he took a balloon, and he made the, pay- the face of himself in, in, like, a Mylar balloon. And literally, you know, that Sam, his mom said that to me. I'm like, he is just unbelievable. I've seen him hang upside down in front of her when he was trying to get her attention, literally, when right after he died. And he'd be waving his arms, and he'd be making me laugh, even though it's not funny. Just the things he would do, you know. Yeah, he's definitely been a special spirit in my life. Don't they spirits? They don't think like people worry. Oh, the spirits—they're going to see me naked in the bathroom. But they don't think <laughs> that way. If they are thinking differently than that, right? Ninety, probably ninety-nine percent of them are. You do have a few um, instances where you have somebody that's earthbound or a sexual entity which will look and will touch and will bother a person uh, in their private time but your loved ones and stuff are not there hanging around doing that no no <laughs> okay good but I, I have seen... had the sin- syndrome the old hag syndrome I was watching a documentary and I and they called it the old hag or something like that with the old and the hag in the title and it was suffocating me when I was at a hotel, staying at a hotel, and lo and behold, this hotel was built on top of an old insane asylum, and they, oh, I mean, it. I was fighting it. Oh, I was oh, fighting I it, that and can be I woke scary. up, oh, and yeah, and the, I had kicked over the lamp, and it broke. I mean, this was, I was too afraid to go back to sleep, and that's how bad it was, and how real it uh-huh. was. So, yes, and it never happened to me again, but... That was so real. And then I was watching this documentary that they said the old Hague syndrome is when they try to, they're on you and they're heavy on you and they're trying to suffocate you. Pressing on, and pressing that happened like, to me. You know, Have you heard of that like one? trying to press you with stones like the old days. Mm. You know, and very far back horrible. in medieval times. So it wasn't sexual, but I could feel them on top of me trying to suffocate me. That's a whole nother show, sexual demons and entities of people. <laughs> On the it does occur, mm, yeah. and I do get a lot of cases, believe it or not, about that. And um, 
that there are. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, most is, mostly it's not spirits, though. It's a random spirit here and there. I have, we're about done, I guess. But I had a case of funny one in the U.K. where they, they were living in a place that used to be a brothel, and they kept, kept getting touched and goosed by something, you know. And so um, we went and looked, and they it was uh, it was red coats. They were hanging around at the brothel, and they were dead, And but they thought that was still the brothel. And they were pinching the girls and being dead. You know, bad. So we oh, no. we crossed them over. We got rid of them. We fixed it. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of stories out there. <laughs> that is too funny and interesting. Wow, Johnny, have you ever seen or felt a spirit? Um, honestly, not one that I could say for certain was it a spirit. I mean, I've seen things I couldn't explain. But the thing is, is that I. I try not to put a label on it like a, it was a spirit because I think that sort of takes the diplomatic approach. I do think, right. though, that I don't know if I could tell, you know. Um, it would have to be – I think it would I think it would be it, – it, would, it would be something that would, you know, that, that would have to – be pretty profound and I'm not saying it couldn't happen I'm just saying that I tend to you know oh wait a minute um some give me one second here one second. Hmm. oh Bonnie hi yes. I'm still here hi. <laughs> this is also He's interesting working on something huh did yes, I get any questions? Let me check. Yes. He's probably got another one coming through or something, another person. Could be. But do you have your stories? I mean, you said that you wrote a journal when he asked you about if you were going to write a book. You kept a lot of things in journals. I think you have a lot of stories that would be so interesting. Do you have anywhere where people could read a few stories? I don't have a blog started yet myself, but I've thought about it, and I have thought about writing books, too. I'm not sure at this point exactly which direction I'm going to go with that, but, yes, I have a suitcase full of journals. <laughs> I flew with me from Florida here. Her. <laughs> yes. And then more that I've added on to since I've been here. Uh, you know, I still did cases for a little while with uh, Forest Moon, then I then I started my own. I worked with uh, Hunter's Paranormal a little while, some uh, very close uh, people to me that have been Team members are there. Bonnie, a good friend of yours is here. Oh, yeah. Two. Chris, is that you? Yeah, that's me. Hi, Chris. How you doing? Hi, Bonnie. I'm doing for you today. This is the only way I could find to listen to you, so I've been tying up the phone lines listening. (laughs) (laughs) So if you could tell me how to. Yeah, did you find out about my kitty cat? The ghost one? The kitty cat, the ghost cats? Yeah. The ghost cats have crossed over. (laughs) Can't? You had a couple. Oh, I had a couple. Was there a dog too? No, I didn't find a dog, but um, I found a couple ghost cats and, and told them that they were upsetting your current living cat. <laughs> and we can well, kind of found a place for something. How's he doing has, since last night? I did that clearing last night. Actually, the house feels much better on here since you did that. And Good I'm going to order some sage and do a sage cleansing spouse. Good, yeah. Cleansing's a good thing, you know, especially when, you know, you have issues and things that come around sometimes. Regular cleansing, I always recommend it. All right, I will do. I just didn't want to hold up the phone lines, but I was the only one that could, that's the only way I could hear you. Oh, no problem at all, so, hon. <laughs> so that, you take so care. the man you're talking with, he messaged me, and so I told him who I was and how I know you and so okay. I just wanted him to wanted you to know that I was here. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Thank you for coming and listening, Chris. All right. Yeah, I love you. you. I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, bye bye. Bye. 
Oh, so clearing is really important. How often, because I heard that we can over clear with the sage. My daughter's doing this all the time, and it's it's very strong. It's a very strong if she's smell. doing it all the time, then she probably needs to have it looked at. If she's had it, it should normally once a week, some people twice a month. Depends on where you live and how bad your how much your activity is. Cleansing kind of is a preventative. You get your house clear, then you cleanse to keep it clear because it raises the vibration of the environment in a place where the negative energies don't like to hang out. They're looking to find. <laughs> something that they can get into and cause havoc, basically. So, <clears throat> excuse me, cleansing is a good thing. And, and it really, I've, I've lived in places where I had to clean, cleanse once or twice a week. And I've lived in places mm-hmm. where it's not so often like where I live now. But I also live with other people who are gifted like me that have protections up. We have, like, a lot of protection up because we all work in this field and put ourselves sometimes in harm's way with negative stuff, you know. So we try to keep our home and everyone safe. So it's not like me. Oh, right. Everybody. So, you know, it's like several of, you know, my sister and her husband, they're both into this, you know. They just do it on a different team. Oh, okay. Because you could absorb this, like you were. Johnny was asking you, "Do you get? Have you ever gotten sick before?" And you did. So of course, you're dealing with so many people's emotions and well, a lot of paranormal activity and stimuli that, of course, you you're going to be absorbing it. So you have to protect yourself. So that's important. I have the crystals all in my four corners of my home for just to keep word off the negativity. I have that. It's a nice feeling. Plus, they're gorgeous crystals. I love it. Beautiful. Oh, I got a lot of them all over my room. It's important, well, isn't it, the crystals? Grid. Excuse me? Mm-hmm. It's important. I hear which. It's important to It's important to have the crystals around, isn't it? Yes, it is. And they build, they also raise the vibration, bring protection. Excuse me, I got a little bit of a cough. <clears throat> That's okay. But yes, they. You've been talking. There, I have crystal grids, like in my room, several of them with different crystals for energy and protection. Me too. Wow. I wear them and I this carry them all sometimes. So you carry them too. I don't think of carrying them. I need to wear carry. Them what is the main one? Yes. And what about the black tourmaline or black too? obsidian? I like mm-hmm. Tiger's Eye. Um, one that helps me a lot is, um, it's called Blue Tiger's Eye or uh, Hawkeye. That's another one that kind of heightens your your ability to notice and and understand what's going around. And, you know, you're more in tune to it. But, yeah, okay, I have a, a lot question. Of Bonnie, sure. when you are just out and about throughout your whole life, you're out and about, you're you know, in crowds or you're in a line somewhere, you can feel people's energy. Have you ever run across a person where you know, oh, they really committed a horrible yes. thing, like a crime, a murder, and you knew that they did? Yes. What goes through your mind when you run across you like that? It's, it's, it's really, really, I don't know, unnerving feeling because you're right there with them. You know, it's like I've had two times, and how it appears to me, is like a huge gray. Their aura is completely gray, like a smoke cloud around them. And then I look at them, and it's like I read them, like I'm like, oh, buddy, there's something really, really, really bad wrong here. You know, it's just something that I've seen it in a grocery store once, and I've seen it in a restaurant once. That uh, that 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 bad, you know. And you, and, can you uh, see the details of what they did? Do you see the murder? Do you can you view it? Not always, no. Not always. So the I don't two know times murder, that happened, but I know that they were they're very dark, they're very bad, like it, you know, you can feel the just total negative energy. Now so far in the couple times it's happened I didn't get an image of a of a murder on that one or anything. Okay, so when you I just get away from it because happened. it feels real bad. Right, but in the restaurant, you may not be able to get away because you're sitting there, you know, and they're eating and you're eating, so you're sitting there. Wow, what, okay. Say, Luckily, I, I was getting takeout. The they person. were sitting, I was getting takeout. So I just walked oh, by and I was like, my daughter was with me. Yeah, it was like a Chinese takeout in Florida. 
And when we walked out, I'm like, did you feel that or see that? And she, because she has abilities, my youngest daughter. And I'm like, she's like, no, mom. I'm like, oh, that was something really bad, bad, bad going on with that person. I don't know what. Yeah. But it's oh, really wow. bad. And so <laughs> a, a normal person, it, you know? would a normal person see that or feel that or just think Maybe not. they I were in a bad mood? Wow, no, oh, that is so interesting because I, I try to test myself with that and just what kind of energy I feel from a person I might be standing next to. And I can feel a difference yeah. in oh, yeah. energies. So oh, that's very interesting to me. That's how I work. Hmm. Everybody has their own energy, you know, and that's why I like a picture because, I mean, I can't be in Scotland or England or ever, all over the United States. So if I get a picture, and, then, and a lot of times I'll ask for their address so that I can Google Earth and actually see and read the land and feel the energy around where they're living to see if it's a land issue rather, rather versus, you know, something else when I'm trying. You know, I leave it open when I go in there open-minded because it could be an appliance making noises. It could be this or that. You know, you look at all aspects of what could be Makes going sense. on uh, all the way around yeah. when you're getting contacted, you know, about a case. So. Oh, that's that's really cool. Well, I just want to make sure everybody knows where to find you again. If people have just gotten on, we are here with Bonnie Smith, psychic and medium, and you can find her on Facebook. She has a great Facebook page, and she works with a few others. It's like a team she has. So if you have questions, we didn't have very long. You know, we only have an hour to an hour and a half with you mm-hmm. and if somebody didn't get through today they could reach yes. you there and just contact you Absolutely. on Facebook and that's the best way okay great yes, it sure is that's the uh, best way a messenger Facebook you know is the way to get me or, or my group who we watch and monitor the post you know I don't have any restri- I don't have any rules and I don't have any restrictions in my group um, basically I haven't needed them, so I haven't implemented them. You know, people have been very respectful. I've only had a couple that I've had to boot out of my group in the last year or so. You know, basically people can post what they want, ask what they want, you know, freely. And um, it's only a rare occasion when I find something that's offensive or that, or someone does something that I feel is danger to the other members of the group. And then I will, you know, move, remove them. So it's, you know, they can post in there. They can ask questions. They can share what they've been through without being laughed at. Because that would, you know, anyone who knows me knows that I'm not going to ever humiliate or ridicule somebody for talking about what they've been through. And people need that. I did. I think, I'm thinking back. I guess I'm treating myself as I treat others. I'm thinking of what I would have needed, what I wish I would have yeah. had, and where I would be today if I'd have had it. And would you have that been in a different place? I think that I would have, you know, I think that I could have been far more, you know, along in the whole thing, helping many, many more people had I embraced it sooner. You know, I guess it, it happened, I do believe that it happened in the right time, but I sometimes regret that I, it took me so long to come around and really start doing it, you know. I think joining Facebook yeah. in 2010 was probably a turning point where I actually had contact with other people with different, you know, different values and ideas and, and you know, psychics and people with, you know, things like that. And it, and, if, and if my first friend was someone like that on Facebook. So it's just like it was leading me along by the finger. Come on, it's time to do this. <laughs> yes. And then you didn't feel alone. But the way you had to hide it, then you were in your shell. And that's not always easy to come out and break out of it. But we are certainly glad that you did, and it's mm-hmm. so wonderful to meet you. And thank you, Johnny, for finding I'll Bonnie. Thank both of you. Yes, and if y'all never know anyone who needs my help or needs help, you know, uh, you know where we're at, and we'd love that. You know, we're we're good about it. Um, Karen Snyder Jane has a group of her own that um, that she helps me with my cases also, and she teaches a lot of basic psychic protection. Just what normal people need to use that they may encounter something here and there, kind of like what you did, you know, but it won't necessarily follow them or be attached to them, you know, but it, even then, you know, when we, when we, we help people, a lot of times when I'm done, Karen works with them and, um, 
she trains them and teaches them to shield and, and a lot about all protection and stuff. So, you know, we try to educate people as we go along, too, and in and, and whatever, you know, sense that they're interested in spiritually, you know, for the good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the yes. Oh, good. I like it that you have a team. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Um, I generally do most of the cases. Uh, as far as the magic and the different things I have to do, an astral projection, but they do a lot of the, they do everything, a lot of the posts, and Karen, Karen helps me with them. Uh, Lindsay and Melissa are fantastic in their training. They just got to meet this week as Lindsay moved from Florida to Ohio to stay with Melissa, so we're happy for her, new start in the life. So people do get to meet each other. Y'all hang in there on that, okay? Because uh, yeah. I think it's going to happen. Yeah, we were yeah. disappointed because we work we worked together for over a year and never have wow. met face to face, right, Johnny? Oh, right. No, that's... Where is Johnny? Any like is he here? Are you here? I'm right here. I'm right here. <laughs> oh, I haven't heard you peep for a while, so I wondered and I was wondering. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, great. <laughs> well, thank you so much and again. We appreciate you helping all of our callers, and it was really enlightening and eye-opening, and it would be nice to hear more stories in the future. Absolutely. I'd be glad to come back and, and, and help all I can, you know, and, and tell some. Okay, great. Well, everybody, you're going to be able to hear this show again. If anybody got on late and didn't hear the entire show, it was great. And you can find it on our YouTube channel, Life, Laughter, Happiness, YouTube. And while you're there, please do subscribe and visit us on our website, lifelaughterhappiness.com. Stop by our Facebook, uh, Life, Laughter, Happiness, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as stop by and say hi to Bonnie Smith. And make sure that you do make an appointment with her and her team if you need help. And if you forget, contact us and we'll get you to her because we know how to get to Bonnie. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you. You guys stay blessed. Yes. Thanks for having me. I appreciate well, good night, it. Everyone. You're welcome. Good night, Bonnie. Good night, Bonnie. You're welcome. Good night. Good night.